Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. At the moment, it looks like a surface, right? I can, we can do multi-touch. We can have multiple Multi people interacting at the same touch. time, yeah. moving this, you know, the, 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 the standard zooming a photo thing, right? Sure. But what we can do with this is we can use a number of uh, fairly cheap objects, like a bit of tracing paper or... Um, Regular old tracing paper? Yeah, where's that piece of the tracing paper gone? There it's gone go. without a trace. Oh, Piece of tracing paper, right. and we hold it over this, and we reveal other information. Oh, hang on. How? There's like text. Yeah. Is that text on the paper? Or? The text is being. Uh, no, I don't think it's... What? So have a look at this uh, this map of the night sky. We need the picture of you. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that's radical. So how the hell do you do that? I like the little pull-out thing. It's the more uh, dramatic. So this, is a, this is where we come from, Cambridge in the UK, right? So right. So a map of Cambridge. If you don't know your way around, you can use that. <laughs> can you put it closer? That's upside down, right? Jeez. <laughs> oh, so this isn't surface. It's second light. That's right. So it's, uh, it, 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 in many surface. ways it uses uh, similar ah. sensible principles to the surface. I mean, fundamentally, there's rear projection here. There's a camera underneath which is tracking, for example, the touch information in a way, in a very similar way to surface. Um, but this isn't, I mean, it's not, in some ways, it's not based on surface. You build it from the ground up, and we've got one fundamental difference. So on a surface, the display itself, the material that makes up this surface, is kind of a diffuser, like tracing paper. It's a, I mean, slightly more sophisticated. You project onto it from beneath, beneath and you see the image. Wow. Okay? This, we're using a special liquid crystal material. Um, oh, on the, you, the screen itself? The screen itself. Okay. And it has two states. Um, it's either diffuse, like this, or it's transparent, like a sheet of glass. So that we've got so two hot. projectors underneath here. We're actually using two projectors, and we're projecting two different images, and we're switching this projector the whole time. We're switching it between being diffuse and transparent, diffuse and transparent. Ah, so it's like almost like an interlaced signal? Yeah. Okay. Or it so, is an interlaced signal, I guess. Yeah. So when you emit the, when you transmit, the projector that's synchronized to, to, to emit light when it's diffuse produces the image that you see, right? So that's the image you see. But when it's transparent and the other projectors are on, that, th those rays of light just pass straight through. You don't see them. So what you're seeing is for a fraction of a second, you're seeing the diffuse image, and then a fraction of a second later, you're seeing nothing, and then the diffuse image, and then nothing. We're doing it so quickly that due to persistence of vision, you only see the static version of the... So it's an optical illusion. <laughs> yes. So, so we're... the other part of the optical illusion is on the ceiling. So the information that's being transmitted when it's transparent ends up on the ceiling, right? So if you look up there, you're seeing a second image, a different image, and then a split second later you're seeing nothing, then you're seeing that second image, then nothing, and again it still doesn't flicker, right? Because it's going so quickly. Wow. So how many frames a second then? Uh, it's 60 hertz. It's running at 60 hertz. Okay. So every 60 of a second we, show, we spend half the time showing this frame and half the time showing that frame. But if you catch those rays of light as they pass in front of you, you get to see that second image. And you can also, I mean, this works for animations as well, or like moving yeah, sure. pictures. Yeah. So if we, if we switch to a different uh, version of the demo, what we're doing in the first version of the demo is we're showing, projecting an image through as well as an image on the surface. What we're doing in this, well, as well as projecting a second image, we're actually using a camera to look through the display when it's transparent, and we use that to track the position of it. So you can distort images. So this thing wow. here is actually emitting some infrared light down, and our camera underneath is tracking that. With a regular surface, this wouldn't be possible, because a regular surface, that infrared light wouldn't get through the diffuser. But because we're, we're look, the camera is synchronized to look when it's transparent, and so what? We, can, we can track the position of this and, and have the image moving around. <laughs> Okay. So the image is being <laughs> wait. The image is being controlled by the object then. Yes. So as I move the object around, the image follows. And normally, if I was to project a square from a projector, and I had it on a piece of paper, you'd see a square. If I tilt the piece of paper, what happens to the square? It becomes distorted. Yeah. But what we do here is we track the angle of this. So instead of it becoming stretched and distorted, we pre-distort the image. We actually squash it down so that by the time it lands on this, it ends up being the same size again. <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't matter how I hold this, as I move this around, I get the right image. That's wild. This is just a cheap bit of plastic. Oh, so is, is that the image that's being that's animated? The yeah. or, oh, I see, so as he moves it, it, right it angles. Up, that guy there gets okay. Alright, right, so that's, the, that's what it that's is. What, that's what it's actually projecting. So okay. when it hits this, it ends up looking at the right aspect ratio. Wow. So what are the applications of uh, this particular iteration of uh, surface technology? So one of the things, well, I mean... The magic show. Yes, I see that. <laughs> this is total magic. I want one. 
So that I want two. The first guy, uh, one, of, one of the early demos we gave, and the guy said, why did you, why did you build this? And, um, and he said, was it just because you can? <laughs> and so that's one of the things. We're excited by technology and the possibilities of technology. But, and as we start refining it, we start thinking about the applications for it. So one of the things we're really excited about is, is visualizing three-dimensional data. So imagine you've got um, a scan, like maybe a brain scan. A physician's got a brain scan, and he wants to look at it. So rather than, the brain scan might have been taken as a number of slices, but it's not necessarily that you want to look at it on a slice-by-slice basis. And you could use your PC, but you have to use your keyboard and your mouse in a particular way to change your orientation. But suppose you've got a device like this, um, and suppose you would say, well, the, the, the scan is virtually in this space above the device. Then I can take my mobile surface, and I can put it here, and I can actually render the scan at that point. And if I want to move up and down, I can take different slices. So suppose I find something, is that a tumor? I'm not, and I can look at it very, very uh, naturally with fast you know, interaction speed, and I can, can really hone in on a particular area that I'm interested in. The other thing about this, this is very cheap. It's just a piece of plastic and a couple of LEDs and a battery, an AA battery. Wow. Um, and when it's used above this surface, it turns into a display which supports multi-touch. So, in fact, uh, the calibration of this is a little bit off. But when I put my finger on here, you can see the touch point. It's a little bit. It's not yep, quite. I can see it. I if can I put see two it. fingers down, I get two touch points, right? So then, so right this, now, this is this is inert. The the, the is, just is in this in this version of the demo. Okay. Yeah, we have to swap. But in, yeah, we can do it all at the same time. So, sure. So this can track multi touch, and this can track multi touch at the same okay. time. So you could zoom in. So so you'll vary on this this yeah. three D data, so and you hot. could zoom in and out, for example, on a particular area you're worried about. Wow. And just gaming, on gaming is another thing we're interested in as well. Oh, gaming. Yeah. Generically, what you're doing here is you know we had keyboards and mice for a long time, and they're clearly here to stay, and they're very very good at some of things. And then surface computing came along as a new paradigm. Maybe it's a, a way of using computers in new scenarios so it's a bit difficult to use a keyboard on the mouse. But the interaction with surface computing is still bound to the surface, right? The, the displays on the surface, they touch on the surface. With this, we're bringing the user interface, the user experience into the real world, out of the display. The computer's coming out of, out of the screen into the real world. Wow. So you can imagine the, like gaming applications where gestures, because the camera can see right out into the real world, maybe you can do whole body gestures as part of the interaction experience. Okay, so flip back to the other demo then. The I. Since I, this is the first anything close to a surface that I've 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 seen, so I I, I must multi-touch. So you have to press quite hard. Wow. That's so cool. We grab that side with one finger. All right, and then. Wow. That's a first. <laughs> For me, at least. Good job, guys.